Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech and today what we're going over is different vacuum pump problems. There's nothing more frustrated than after you braze a line, pressure tested, and maybe you did an oil blowout because you had some existing components in here, but then you go ahead and pull your vacuum and there's something wrong. Um, so maybe you pull your vacuum down and then it stops and you just don't know why it's not going down below 500 microns or maybe after you shut your valves here and then turn your vacuum pump off, maybe the system rises all the way up uh, to where it can't read anymore but you just got done leak testing and you just don't understand why you're having this problem so after you double check again just make sure that you don't have any leaks in the system there's a couple things that uh, might be the problem one thing is that the gasket inside could be all, all chewed up so that's just due to uh, the refrigerant oil eating up at it or maybe tightening the uh, connection in too hard so that can be replaced you just pull the inner uh, cord depressor out with a pair of needle nose you just unscrew it out then you can pull this out and you can replace it with these new gaskets another thing could be that this valve right here is potentially leaking or this connection in here could be leaking a lot of times this stuff will hold during the pressure test but then when you're vacuum pumping that's when you end up having a problem it could be that you have just too many connections and maybe something in here is leaking. If you have a setup like this, it's best to typically take all the extra pieces off, especially where you have that valve cord depressor, and then you can just use the hose without the valve cord depressor. Maybe you're trying to pull a vacuum through a quick disconnect fitting or something like that, and that's leaking. It's possible to end up having the handle here uh, leaking on your manifold gate set if you're pulling a vacuum through this. Uh, if you've put this through a whole lot of use over years, then you might have to rebuild that handle assembly. So what I recommend is that you try not to go through the manifold set, but you know you can, especially if it's a new set and it's nice and tight. Uh, but uh, it's best to try to just attach it from the vacuum pump directly to the system in order to get a deep vacuum and to just take some of the worries out of your head you know just uh, if, if you've done battle with your vacuum setups and uh, wasted time doing that and everything if you just have a dedicated set for just vacuum pumping not the set that you charge refrigerant with or anything like that not a set that would have burnout oil going through it just a nice clean set that you're doing vacuum pumps with of course you're going to be vacuuming systems that have once had refrigerant in them uh, but it, once again, it's still best to have your own vacuum hose set dedicated for just vacuuming. So this is what I'm recommending, uh, a, a hose setup that's also vacuum rated. So these hoses are vacuum rated, not just pressure rated, but they say vacuum rated on them. And you don't have valve core depressors on either side. There are no valves. There's no extra connections. That's what I would recommend you using. The least amount of fittings, the better. And if you have the valve cores pulled out, that's better as well. But you can pull a vacuum with the valve cores in it. It's just gonna take a lot longer. And after you get done vacuum pumping, if your micron gauge is attached somewhere is out here, what's gonna happen is after you shut your vacuum pump off, your micron gauge is going to end up rising uh, quite a bit. Just due to uh, the inside vacuum is not as deep as right here, which is closer to the vacuum pump. So if you have a restriction right here, when you turn the vacuum pump off, this micron gauge is, is going to rise uh, pretty significantly, which means that you need to get the vacuum level down even further before you isolate your vacuum pump. Another problem that I've experienced in the past uh, quite a few times is after you pump down a unit and you have shut the valves, or maybe you've moved the unit to a different location at the building and then you're, you're reattaching it with new line set, uh, sometimes you have a problem where these valves are actually able to hold the refrigerant back in the system but are not actually sealed for the vacuum. So what will happen is you'll have your vacuum pump running and your micron level won't go down low enough. Um, something that I've done is just to check it. I've actually put my hand over it like that and you can feel your hand kind of getting stuck on here. And that's because this valve is actually leaking your vacuum from around the brass inner piece inside. So what I would recommend you doing is shut your vacuum pump off, um, bring the system back up to zero PSIG, and take your service wrench on there and give it a nice extra tightening. You're gonna use a wrench just to hold it 
and just, just make it a little bit tighter, front seated. So that would be clockwise downwards. But sometimes that works. Another thing that you can do is you take your valve cap right here and you put a little dab of refrigerant oil on the inside of the valve cap and you rub it on just like this and put a little bit more refrigerant oil right around here. You put your valve cap on so you got to figure which one is the one that's leaking and you want to put the valve cap on the one that's leaking and the other one is how you're going to either break the vacuum with refrigerant from the system into the lines or um, if that manufacturer says that they don't want you to open the valve, say if it's the liquid line, you can break the vacuum with liquid refrigerant right into the liquid line. Sometimes it's recommended just to put a little bit of refrigerant oil on the cap and on here and seal this down you know, after you're done installing the system. So if you need to do that just to get pressure in the lines and then after you get pressure in the lines, and remember now it's actually holding, then you can go ahead and um, open this valve and it should hold pressure. Sometimes these valves are, are actually burnt up inside because somebody braised too much on it. If that's the case and it's really leaking bad, then, then you don't want to try doing that. You want to actually recover the refrigerant out of the whole system and replace this valve. But this is just a tip for when you're in the middle of a job and you just need to get by that one spot. A lot of times I've done just what I was telling you and after I've uh, open the service valve all the way. It hasn't leaked refrigerant and I didn't have to worry about it up here. If after you're done the whole process and it is leaking up here, this valve cap, you know, you don't want to expect that this is the only thing that's stopping the refrigerant from coming out of the system. If that's the case, you really need to replace that, that valve right there. But a lot of times it's just leaking uh, during the vacuum and not when it has pressure in it. So sometimes you run into these little issues. Uh, with older equipment so you just need to know how to get by that. Just so you know I've included a list of all the different tools used in this video the vacuum hoses, the valve core removal tools, the micron gauge, the different manifold sets, service wrench, and the vacuum pump. That's all listed in the description below. Hope these procedures have helped you and I uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.